So friends, let's have a quick revision on important topics related to Konjing Taiwa. So I'm sure first of all you know that Konjing Taiwa is something which joins the eyeball with the eyelid. So we have three parts of Konjing Taiwa, the bulbar which is on the sclera, the palpebral which is behind the eyelid and this one the fornix which joins the one and two thing. Now to visualize the upper conjunctiva we, we have a retractor this is called as the decimars lid retractor okay decimars lid retractor. It is an instrument which is used to see mainly the upper fornix the upper part of the conjunctiva that has to be seen sometimes. Now the most important pathology here for us is trachoma because this is one of the causes of blindness worldwide. Now, so what is trachoma? Can you see this is the end stage trachoma where the cornea has got an opacity. There is a loss of shin of the conjunctiva and we also see the lashes they have changed its position. They are now pointing towards the cornea. So this is the famous trichiasis eyelash. Okay. Now what happens earlier? So people who are staying in filthy environment, dirty environment, the three Fs, the flies, the fomites and the fingers, okay. So they take the chlamydia trachomatis to the eye of a small child. Now in the eye of a small child, we see there is an active inflammation by chlamydia trachomatis. Now active inflammation can be seen by two things. Either a papillae, red, 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 velvety red appearance to the conjunctiva or a follicle which looks like sago grain. These white, white, white are sago grain follicles. So papillae or follicles or both of them, they are seen in active stage of trachoma. Okay. Now, once this stage becomes chronic, the child has also grown up into an adult. What will happen? So, it will lead to a scarring. So, a stage of scarring. Now, stage of scarring will be visible in conjunctiva first as the line of scarring. This line is called as arch line. Later on, we will also see some lesions like that. These are called as the famous Herbert pits. And these are the healed follicles on the limbus. Remember, this is a pathognomic finding in trachoma. That means if you see Herbert Pitts in someone, this disorder has to be trachoma. Follicles you can see elsewhere, papillae you can see elsewhere, but Herbert Pitts you can't see anywhere else, okay? Later on what will happen? The scarring will go to the lid, to the lid marge, into the eyelash. So everything becomes haywire. You may have trichiasis, you may see entropion and you may see thickening of the lid margin like tylosis. We can also have adhesions in blephron. Now, the only complication in trachoma is a development of corneal ulcer which could have been avoided by these trichiasis last treatment, okay? So, my question to you is, what is the safe strategy which WHO has given? So, they say do a surgery for interned eyelid entropion or even trichiasis lash. Do a surgery, right? Antibiotics are to be given for active inflammation and azithromycin is the drug of choice. They also say that you have to promote the facial hygiene, the environmental sanitation. Okay, these are the prophylactic measures. Okay, now what is the surgery? Please remember whenever the eyelids, margins are going inwards or even the eyelashes are turned inwards, we have to give a full thickness incision so that the lashes which was going inside, it will turn outside. So this is how there is the treatment for trichiatic eyelash by the modality of surgery. Now with that, let's talk about the small newborn baby. Now guys, you must have seen small babies, they cry a lot, but they don't produce tears. Why? Because the lacrimal gland is not fully functional. So first of all, when I see watering from a newborn's baby's eye, it is abnormal. Okay, so what abnormality? It could be ophthalmia neonatorum, it could be congenital glaucoma, or it could be congenital decryocystitis. So now we are learning today about ophthalmia neonatorum. Okay, first of all, it is an image-based question. Now, depending on the presentation of watering in the newborn side, the time period, we divide it into five types. Come girl out, have coffee is the mnemonic. So, what do you mean by that? Come girl out, have coffee. So, this is the mnemonic that we have made. If the baby presents just on the day 
of the birth with this discharge watering you think about one person silver nitrate which was described by creeds they say that on the eye of the newborn you can put silver nitrate it was found that the silver nitrate itself was causing an infection so this method is now obsolete okay most dangerous cause of this condition is gonococcus the girls g girl gonococcus danger now after 3 days it could be any other bacteria after 5 days it is herpes and typically after 1 week what will you see chlamydia which happens to be the most common cause of ophthalmia neonatorum as well okay dear friends so if i just give you this picture and i ask you what is the most common cause here you have to say chlamydia is the most common cause isn't it chlamydia is the most common cause okay if i ask you what is the most dangerous one no timeline no time limit then you have to say gonococcus all right now have a look at this condition another very very interesting question so we have a small boy he's a 8 year old boy and he is living in a remote village presented with his mother with difficulty in vision during evening hours can i say this is the child having night blindness yes so it was found that vision is normal but anterior segment show this picture so guys what is this picture can you see some problem in the conjunctiva can i say there is a lot of dryness in the conjunctiva we can say this is a stage of conjunctival xerosis and when i read this question i think about something which is due to vitamin a deficiency so can i say this is a condition we know by the name of xerophthalmia yes so xerophthalmia is a spectrum of ocular diseases ocular problems due to vitamin a deficiency please do not say xerophthalmia is only dry eye do not say xerophthalmia is only night blindness it is actually everything isn't it now my question to you what is the first symptom of xerophthalmia this is night blindness what is the first sign of xerophthalmia this is the conjunctival xerosis remember bite or spot is a late sign but remember it is a very specific sign so guys these are important words important questions first symptom first sign specific sign okay remember this much okay now late comes the corneal dryness and then we have ulceration and then we have scar formation and changes in the retina so till this stage this is absolutely reversible okay till x2 it is absolutely reversible now my dear friends this is a stage of corneal conjunctival xerosis the first sign and this is a very specific sign the foamy triangular patch on the temporal part of the conjunctiva now friends if i ask you how will you treat a 2 year old child with bite or spot so i will say it should be a 2 lakh international unit preferred doses oral on 01 and 14 day okay this is for the treatment now if the baby is less than 1 year less than 8 kg we have to give half the dose which becomes 1 lakh international unit orally on the same days now sometimes the baby cannot tolerate the oral dose so we have to give half the dose as intramuscular dose on the same day 0 1 and 14 okay so this is all about your xerophthalmia now guys let's go back to the question and try to solve it so guys will i do a indirect ophthalmoscopy to see the retinal changes yes of course because you can have other complaints other things related to nectalopia now ask for your immunization history yes of course why not the earliest sign is is xerosis of the conjunctiva yes of course guys what is not correct is this because in this child who is 8 years of age the exact dose should have been a 2 lakh international unit so that's what i want to tell you beta that here we have to give this what 2 lakh international unit should be given here all right or if we want to give intramuscular then only it will be 1 lakh international unit now my next topic in conjunctiva is about this condition if i give you this hint this buzzword summers itching small boys who i am don't say allergy please be very specific and say it's a vkc vernal keratoconjunctivitis now i hope you know that in vernal keratoconjunctivitis there is a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction mainly due to exogenous allergen which are supposed to be the 
dust particles or it may be pollen grains so it happens in children due to a ige type mediated reaction okay now what i see is a small boy in his first decade frequent itching in summer months and i see a ropey discharge okay a very thick kind of discharge with that i also see large large big papillae these papillae are like cobblestone we call them cobblestone papillae okay we also classically see small elevated lesions unlike herbert pit they are elevated lesions seen in boys small boys and these are horner tranta spots okay these are accumulation of eosinophils near the limbus all right now we can also have denny morgan lines these are some folds this is due to the continuous itching that the child does and this is a very thick kind of discharge we call it the ropey discharge now another feature is the shield ulcer it's a pyq they have given the same shield ulcer and they ask you in which condition we have a shield ulcer so characteristically this is seen in vkc now you can also see a pseudo gerontoxon which is exudation near the limbus and this is not a arcosinilis that's a gerontoxon okay it looks like arcosinilis that's why we call it pseudo gerontoxon now friends my next very very important question is how are you going to treat vkc so can i say first of all because it's an allergy it's a very uh, important condition with a lot of itching so i can give antihistaminics mast cell stabilizer but remember we have a very important drug the drug of choice in the market it is a combination drug okay so olopatadine is first of all the drug of choice now once they give you a question in a twisted manner so if the patients are having a lot of acute symptoms lot of itching we can also start the patient on topical steroids okay please remember topical steroids can also be given as the first drug if they are asking you for acute control of symptoms the rest drugs are also you have to remember we can start him on immunomodulators if this is a intractable itching okay now friends you should be able to differentiate atopic keratoconjunctivitis with vkc now my common sense says that vkc is mostly in small children atopic is generally in older people okay now this is you know having a shield ulcer this may lead to persistent epithelial defect and it may be a chronic condition but vkc generally starts in 5 to 7 years of age and it is generally over by the onset of puberty so mostly 15 16 years afterwards we don't see vkc patients so this is the main thing that can differentiate vkc from a akc mainly the history okay now with that are you able to give me what is the answer here we see some big 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 papillae but what is the history here the history is very different from vkc this is a female having a history of contact lenses since a long period now you saw a very similar picture to vkc but the history is not suggestive of vkc so is it vkc no not at all these are the giant papillae of giant papillary conjunctivitis so please remember friends whenever we have such type of question do not say that this is gpc unless until you get a history so it is the history which is very important so somebody who has a history of contact lens usage or maybe a suture in the eye or maybe a prosthetic eye you can have the conjunctival large 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 papillae which can be due to mechanical irritation it's not a true hypersensitivity reaction okay friends now the third allergy that we have to read is a flectanular conjunctivitis guys can you see a nodule here so this nodule is typically a flecten okay this is typically a flecten okay friends now this flecten is nothing but a nodule near the limbus which has happened due to a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction it is occurring in people who are mostly having a hypersensitivity by staph aureus proteins or in our scenario in our part of the country hypersensitivity to the tuberculin protein understood this much so now how to treat now once the patient is having a flecten you can give a short course of topical steroids okay 5 to 10 days topical steroids and if the patient is found to have a att we can also start the patient on att okay so please remember this is absolutely different from vkc very different 
now the next one guys can you again see a nodule here is this flictin so it's not a flictin because this is very similar to your pterygium because it is actually mostly a precursor of pterygium it is a elastotic degeneration and this is the difference between this and pterygium this is not seen in pterygium okay so hyalinization of the connective tissue is not seen basically this is a fat kind of accumulation in the main nasal or temporal part of the conjunctiva near the limbus so it gives you an appearance of a nodule near the limbus okay now my dear friends can you also see a nodule near the limbus but is this a flecten is this a episcleritis or this is a dermoid it's a classical picture of dermoid remember we can also see a limbal dermoid i told you earlier in golden hair syndrome okay so limbal dermoid is a very important picture question for you all basically the dermoid is occurring at the junction of the cornea and the conjunctival epithelium at the limbus actually right now how do you differentiate it from a lipodermoid basically lipodermoid is having uh, you know it is slightly adherent to the conjunctiva it is rather firm thing and it is actually coming from the temporal aspect okay it's coming from here it's coming from here can you see so this is how clinically we can differentiate this from lipo uh, the lipodermoid from a limbal dermoid okay now the next question the next picture question and so many extra questions are related to pterygium which is also known as a surfer's eye now friends as i told you this is also an elastotic degeneration that we saw in pinguincula okay now this is actually a wing shape fold of conjunctiva coming encroaching on the cornea most commonly it is due to the uvb exposure and sometimes it can be seen where there is a localized stem cell deficiency okay now mostly it is seen in the nasal part of the conjunctiva very rarely in the temporal aspect very rarely right so people who are exposed to more windy areas to more uh, sunlight they are the ones who are more prone to develop a pterygium now friends when we describe pterygium we say head neck and body and sometimes we have a stalker's line that is accumulation of iron on the head of the pterygium we call this line a stalker's line now friends very very important question when will the patient come to me seeking a treatment so i will say this is the most common indication of treatment not a decrease in vision okay we may have a decrease in vision in pterygium even if the pterygium is this much only this much why that is because of an astigmatism so if this is cornea and something is coming on the cornea it is going to change the curvature of the cornea giving a refractive error remember this is a with the rule type of astigmatism later on sometimes the pterygium grows big and encroaches the pupillary margin also please remember this is very very late and this is very very less common the most common decrease vision cause is astigmatism okay so how are you going to manage guys we must do an excision with that we have to cover this part of the sclera by an autografting unless and until we put a autograft there is again a chances of recurrence so almost 70% of the cases there will be a recurrence we don't want that so better is to cover this part of the conjunctiva with another part of conjunctiva from the same and that's why we call it autografting now we can add mitomycin c especially in the recurrent cases if there is already a recurrent pterygium okay it has been a recurrent case then you must put a mitomycin c under the conjunctival flap okay so this is your autografting and this is pterygium so we end conjunctiva also now 